I'm Lynn Packer with part three of my video op-ed. This one's about Sean Reyes and Tim Ballard and Operation Underground Railroad's Mormon extremism factor. Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes and Tim Ballard are kindred spirits. They're an OUR fundraising dynamic duo. They're GOP right-wingers, Trump supporters, anti-maskers, get-rich-quick schemers, gun nuts, preppers, survivalists, fringe Mormon doctrine believers, and QAnon-like pedophile conspiracy theorists. But before I take a look at the Mormon extremism aspect, this news update. On August 27th, I was the first to report that the Davis County attorney received a complaint, a request for a criminal investigation into how OUR solicits donations. Since then, Davis County Attorney Troy Rawlings has signaled a criminal investigation, in fact, may have begun. Rawlings posted several Instagram messages. One points out his office has its own child sex crimes unit. Another warns about donation solicitors who falsely claim credit for arrests they did not make. Rawlings included an online video that shows his office's wall of shame. It shows targets of his investigations, which apparently include sex crimes arrests made without any help from private anti-trafficking groups. On Instagram, Rawlings admonishes everyone to investigate before donating. Get details before parting with your cash, he wrote. He also references Utah's communications fraud law. I made reference to that law in my first op-ed. It makes it illegal for anyone to devise a scheme to defraud another or to obtain from another money or anything of value by means of false or fraudulent pretenses, representations, promises, or material omissions. OUR's fastest growing claim combined with other false claims and other material omissions about child sex trafficking could subject Ballard and others to criminal prosecution. A former OUR insider whose name I'm withholding provides damaging testimony. He or she calls Ballard the very best liar I have come across. Whatever brings in more donors, morals and ethics go out the window. Tim has Sean Reyes in his back pocket. OUR has never documented its claims that child sex trafficking is the fastest growing criminal enterprise and that there are 2 million child sex slaves worldwide, among other claims. OUR fundraisers continually fail to disclose facts that could cause people pause before donating money or volunteering services. This is the fastest growing criminal enterprise on the planet. Right now, human trafficking is the fastest growing criminal enterprise internationally. It is the second most lucrative, it's already leapfrogged, arms dealing and counterfeiting. It trails only drug trafficking, and in reality, we don't know. It may have already surpassed that. Rawlings, again on Instagram, warns about affinity fraud and tearful donation appeals. He writes, just because someone claims they are called of God when asking for your money does not necessarily mean they actually are. He suggests people question tearful appeals and guard against affinity fraud. Details do not mean simply listening to a sob story, even if the con invokes religion. Is it a coincidence? Tim Ballard's fundraising approach includes crying and invoking religion. This is from his website. This is one of three great quotes on his website. And I'm just holding this kid thinking, what am I going to do? And I start crying like a baby. I'm just holding this kid and I'm just crying. So Ballard and his wife went to the temple for guidance. The next morning in what Ballard describes as a spiritual download, he received a clear and undeniable answer. Find the lost children. We pray constantly, he says. We pray for protection. We pray for guidance to find the children, to find the honest government officials in other countries. Because what wouldn't you do for your kid? And
And in that case, there's, it's not a surprise that two of those kids that we rescued actually literally became my kids. Finally on Instagram, Rawlings warns that any pressure to keep witnesses quiet could be criminal witness tampering. He cautions against using threats or non-disclosure agreements to silence people. He cites the Utah Code. And then at the end he said, you'll be hearing more from our office about this in the relatively near future. Regarding OUR donors who live in Davis County, OUR has held a lot of fundraisers in Davis County. Davis County donors who believe they were misled could contact the county attorney's office at 801-451-4300 or email investigations chief Craig Webb at this address. Okay, now to the main purpose of this op-ed, some of the key people who are in the OUR orbit. Glenn Beck, Paul Hutchinson, Eric Mutsos, Burgess Owens, Kahia Kamahu, and Russell Brunson. I'll start with Kahia Kamahu. He's seen here with Sean Reyes at an Open Up Utah event. He's a University of Utah business technology graduate. He claims to have a PhD. In 2012, he took out bankruptcy, but he bounced back. He's now a multimillionaire. Was also a motivational speaker. He's CEO of Hawaii-based ROI companies dealing in petroleum, real estate, and small business ventures. He's one of Ballard's OUR operatives, that is a Strike Force team member. 3,000 times Edison failed, but he only needed one time for it to work. I made my first million by the time I was 25 years old. And then 2008 hit, and I hit that crash back down to zero. I had to rebuild my entire company. Failed, 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 failed over and over and over. I worked my ass off, but it was my failures that made me successful. We're now 10 times what I was before. And it was all because of the success in overcoming failures and obstacles. So I challenge you, fail often and fail forward. Boom. One of Kamau's products is a coronavirus fighting nasal screen. It purportedly reduces disease pathogens. They claim it's better than homemade masks. We're surrounded by viruses, it says, and up to 99% effective. Those are claims an attorney general should investigate. Kamau hangs out with OUR movie star Jim Caviezel. There they are in Hawaii. Caviezel starred in A Thin Red Line, The Passion of Christ, and he stars in the upcoming movie Sound of Freedom. And there he is with the man he portrays in that film. Kamau partners with Paul Hutchinson, who I'll talk more about in a minute. They both claim to have PhDs. They have a joint Hawaiian coconut energy drink venture it's a coconut powder drink mix, and they donate a portion of sales to fighting child trafficking. Next is Paul Hutchinson, shown here on the cover of Investor Magazine. He's a multimillionaire Mormon, associates with lots of other millionaires, including Mitt Romney. Here he's shown with other big OUR players, including success coach Tony Robbins, who I do not profile in this op-ed. Hutchinson was with the Bridge Investment Group that had a $13.5 billion fund that it managed. He was a Sean Reyes campaign chairman, an OUR operative, founder of the Children Liberation Foundation, and a dyed-in-the-wall survivalist prepper Hutchinson, as a prepper, has a massive stockpile of food, weapons, ammunition, and military-style armored vehicles. He once bragged, they had a TV series years ago called Doomsday Preppers. I would have won that show. You know, they, they, had a, they have a TV series out years ago that was called Doomsday Preppers. Um, I would have won that show. <laughs> but, but I don't tell everybody that's what I had at the time. But 
Hutchinson is more than a millionaire. He's also well-connected to the rich and famous. He knows dozens of millionaires and is skilled at getting them to not only invest in his company, but also to donate to OUR. He networks by throwing celebrity-studded parties. This is how you network. You, you throw really cool parties and invite a whole bunch of guys that you already know who are rock stars and guys you want to know who are rock stars, and then you tell these other rock stars, hey, these rock stars are coming and we're doing something really cool, and then they all come and meet more rock stars. Hutchinson, while on an OUR mission about four years ago, was accused of fondling a purported child sex slave. The incident was caught on camera. OUR won't release the video. Hutchinson denies the charge. And he says the purported child sex slave was later determined to be 18 or older. I interviewed Hutchinson and he described the incident. It was at a club and the manager raised the dress. There was nothing ever that was touched inappropriately. There was a trafficker there next to me and actually lifted up my hand. If I had pulled back right there, my life would have been in danger, no doubt about it. I caressed the side of her arm at the time. Any undercover CIA agent anywhere would have known that if I pulled back and said, oh no, then we would have been in serious danger for our lives. My source told me about Hutchinson and the touching incident. Hutchinson is a guy who brings a lot of money into OUR. The incident was recorded on camera. Ballard told my source, don't show anyone. A trafficker lifted up the girl's shirt and he touched her breast. OUR claimed she was not a minor. There was another incident. Hutchinson touched a girl's face and kissed her hand. Ballard ordered the same cut. Tim is terrified the touching incident will come out. Sean Reyes thinks Tim walks on water. Here are some other Hutchinson disclosures. That he had bouts with pornography, even, what he said, barely legal sites. What he meant was not quite child porn sites. That he discussed his porn problem with Tim Ballard and Sean Reyes. He said, not that everybody that looks at pornography is addicted, and not that everybody who is addicted ends up being a child pedophile, but every single person that we've arrested, every single one of them started out with an addiction to pornography. He said, when I go on the OUR trips, I feel the Spirit of the Lord 100% with me, directing me, speaking to me every single step of the way. Hutchinson has since been accused of fondling a female rescue worker while on a mission. He declines comment. Now I'll talk about Eric Mutsos. He's one of Utah's leading, if not the leading, anti-masker. He organized Utah's biggest anti-mask rally and concert. It was originally scheduled for May 30th in Davis County. Kaysville Mayor Katie Witt's approval was rescinded by the city council. Then the concert venue was moved to Grantsville. A Twilla County judge disallowed it. His business revival concert was finally held at Cedar City on June 13th. The keynote speaker and rapper was Sean Reyes. He said, predators are exploiting COVID to victimize Utahns, and my AG team and I are on watch, tracking and taking them down, whether they are human traffickers, drug cartels, child pornographers, or other abusers. Here are a few lines out of Reyes's Cedar City rap. Hunting predators, I'm a dragon slayer. Making believers out of all them haters. As I chase down to my town, criminals like a bloodhound till they're found, even underground. Don't mess around in my town. I'll take you down. Who is Eric Mutsos? He's a former Salt Lake City police officer and a devout Mormon. About the Book of Mormon and Jesus, he said, I knew it was true. Times where I feel so close to Christ, I can almost audibly hear his voice. 
He called on the Mormon church to divest itself of KSL television and the Deseret News, and if not, they will be reduced to ashes after the Savior comes to burn Babylon to hell. He recently attended his LDS uh, church service. He said, I thought our family would be the only ones maskless. Nope. To my surprise, about three-fourths of the congregation did not have masks on. It was a beautiful sight, old and young. Here's Mutsos' latest call to protest. He said our children should be the focal point of an October 31st protest from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The right to assemble and gather. Allow them to roam and loot for candy. It will be called Halloween. It's okay to wear this type of mask. He said we're seeing the effects of God's wrath. He said the California fires broke out about a week after the state decided to change the law to give more freedom to pedophiles. And about Utah's severe windstorm, yes, I believe God had something to do with over 3,000 trees ripping out and crashing down in Salt Lake County. Mutsos predicts a doomsday with everyone being physically forced to defend themselves and their families and it may not be against foreign invaders. Sadly, it will most likely be by the very government the apathetic people allowed to grow into what it is today. He said, can someone logically explain to me how we don't enter into a full-on civil war at this point? I believe it's inevitable. But this is what happens when an entire society reaps the benefits of freedoms they didn't fight for. And he posted this on his site, the only reason why the government would want to disarm you after 243 years is because they intend to do something that you would shoot them for. Mutzos gave Tim Ballard top billing at a July 22nd business revival event at Washington City, Utah, masks not required. Here you see Ballard and Mutzos with heavyweight boxing champion Evander Holyfield. Mutzos said, Tim Ballard spoke about Operation Underground Railroad, and in my opinion, he's a true hero. He puts it all on the line, has saved over 4,000 kids from the worst evils our world won't look at. Next up, Russell Brunson. He's an author, an online marketing genius. Here's an example of one of his books. How to Make a Potato Gun was his earliest of a series of promotional home runs. His ClickFunnels app is wildly popular among multi-level marketers who push their internet sales. Plus, his app is a pyramid venture where users can market ClickFunnels itself. Brunson uses his fame and fortune to promote Mormonism and the Book of Mormon. He issues a Book of Mormon challenge. He urges his followers to read the Book of Mormon and pray to get a witness of its truthfulness. Recently, he said, I spent a small fortune and purchased one of the original 5,000 copies of the Book of Mormon that Joseph Smith originally printed. Brunson uses that purchase to explain his hook principle. What does peeing your pants and buying an original edition Book of Mormon have in common? It's about Brunson's method of marketing success, the hook and the story. It's about his marketing the Book of Mormon and the marketing of another book, Abs, Core, and Pelvic Floor by Natalie Hodson. Brunson begins his story with the workout book's author wetting her pants while making a promotional video. He points out most people would have deleted the video to avoid embarrassment. Instead, Natalie Hodson used it as a hook to tell her story and propelled an ebook on peeing your pants to a seven figure business. Brunson explained in a video clip how he made $3 million in 90 minutes and how his hook method worked for his Book of Mormon challenge and Hodson's Pee Pants book. You're creating a story, you're creating a hook and a story gets people interested. Um, today I'm actually filming a product. And what's the product? Well, I spoke at the 10X event, and the 10X event I made 90 minutes, uh, in 90 minutes I did $3 million. So that's a hook and a story. So I'm recording a five hour training today teaching how I did it because that's something that will sell like crazy. People will, 
like we'll put out like you hear that guy Russell he made 90 he made 3 million 90 minutes so you should buy the course figure out how you did it like that that's the that's the key is like that story like I peed my pants I went fat to fit to fat I read the entire Book of Mormon in a day um, I went and bought an original Book of Mormon um, I made three million dollars in 90 minutes like like what's the story you got to find those stories they're out there so how does Brunson figure into OUR he funded OUR's movie Operation Tucson that movie was the primary topic of my first video op-ed. An online pre-release screening netted a claim $3 million in donations. A July 10, 2018 private showing, where Brunson and the movie's director, Nick Nanton, were on the stage with Tim Ballard, brought in another $1 million. At the screening, Brunson told the audience his work for OUR changed his life and he explained how prayer led to selecting Nick Nanton to direct the movie. Pretty sure that my life is gonna change forever after this. <laughs> but I was sitting there in the morning, I was praying like, I don't know what to do or how to do it, and please God, lead me to know what to do to help this organization and see what we can do as a community. And, and I've known Nick for years, but never really well. And as I'm praying this morning, his name popped in my head and said, call Nick right now. Brunson made a promise to those he encouraged to read the Book of Mormon. You will find the power to avoid deception, he said. But that didn't work for Brunson. It didn't help him figure out the documentary he financed is chock full of deceptions, inaccuracies, and falsehoods. Why are so many people mesmerized by the movie to the point they donate millions of dollars? Maybe they drink the same Kool-Aid as Brunson. Drinking the Kool-Aid has come to mean being gullible and taking as gospel anything espoused by a charismatic person. That can include the gullible being too easily willing to invest or donate to some get-rich-quick scheme which at least one Mormon leader, Dallin Oaks, is cautioned against. Oaks, in his book Pure in Heart, talks about why Mormons fall for get-rich-quick schemes. He writes, For at least a decade there have been a succession of frauds worked by predominantly Mormon entrepreneurs upon predominantly Mormon victims. Stock manipulations, residential mortgage financings, gold, silver, diamonds, uranium, and document investments, Pyramid schemes, all have taken their toll upon the faithful and gullible. Whether inherently too trusting or just naively overeager, some Latter-day Saints are apparently too vulnerable to the lure of sudden wealth. You could add, to the lure of anything that is too good to be true. However, the LDS Church's website helps promote Ballard's affinity scam. It says, the fundamental reason he does this work is because of his faith in Jesus Christ. There's no question in my mind that this is the Lord's work and that we are his hands, Ballard says. On to another person in the OUR circle, Burgess Owens. Here he's seen with Sean Reyes and with Tim Ballard. He's a former NFL star, Super Bowl champion, and Mormon convert. Congressional candidate Owens, along with Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes, spoke at this year's Republican National Convention. He opposes Obamacare, supports Trump, and is a Fox News contributor. He tweeted his congratulations to a QAnon-supportive Colorado Republican candidate. And child sex trafficking is one of Owens' campaign talking points. Here's some of Owen's anti-sex trafficking campaign material. He writes, human slavery thrives today. Then he makes some of the same claims that Ballard and Reyes make. 30 million of them, 10 million children are used for cheap labor, sex trafficking, and organ transplant. He asks, where are the voices of the Black Caucus, Black Lives Matter, and former President Obama? Far and away, the person who's had the most influence on Operation Underground Railroad is Glenn Beck, who has the nickname Mr. Apocalypse Now. He's a multimillionaire broadcaster, 
a Mormon convert, and a conspiracy theorist. He owns Mercury Radio Arts, the parent of digital radio TV network, The Blaze. He's a prepper. He said, you don't need to brag that you have an underground bunker filled with a year's supply of food and ammo. Keep it on the down low. Apocalypse Now, called the ultimate movie for conspiracy theorists, is about a rogue army colonel gone off the rails amid the chaos of war. You've heard of Colonel Walter E. Kurtz? Your mission is to terminate the colonel's command. Terminate. Terminate with extreme prejudice. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Glenn Beck believes a civil war is imminent and issued this dire warning. He believes the war will be touched off by a Marxist conspiracy, mail-in voting, Black Lives Matter, the defund police movement, mask wearing, church closings, and the left normalizing pedophilia. Well, tonight I'm going to show you why this revolution is nothing like anything we've ever faced before. I will show you why this one is dark, dangerous, sinister, and flat out evil. The revolution will destroy all of us. And tonight, the way America could end in 2020. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about civil war and the destruction of America as we know it. Civil war, it's going to begin at the election. You are going to realize that your country is in its final stage. It is only in its final stage if you don't know you are being played if you don't know what's about to happen. And if you strike out or add to the chaos in any way, you will be an accelerant on this fire. You must trust in God. You must pray like you've never prayed before. Glenn Beck's impact on OUR cannot be overstated. He played the key role, raising money and nationwide awareness at the birth of OUR. He kickstarted two separate but related entities, Ballard's nonprofit Operation Underground Railroad and the for-profit movie television action series venture Abolitionists LLC, headed by two Utah filmmakers and a Hollywood producer. Both were begun near the same time in 2013, but the movie venture led out. The relationship between Ballard and the filmmakers turned rocky, even ugly, very quickly. The beginnings of the abolitionist project played out on Glenn Beck's television show. Hollywood producer Jerry Mullen and Utah filmmakers Chet Thomas and Darren Fletcher pitched the television series movie concepts to Beck. Jerry Mullen, of course, is well known. He's seen here with Steven Spielberg. He's an Oscar winner. Produced movies like Minority Report, Twister, Rain Man, Schindler's List, and Days of Thunder. He's a Mormon, and he's a Tea Party supporter and conspiracy theorist. The TV series about the dramatic rescue of child sex slaves, at first, was to be broadcast on Beck's network. Darren Fletcher told me, Glenn pounded on his desk pointed at Chet and me and said, I know what I want. I want a television series and I want you two to produce it for me. Near the same time, Ballard's OUR was brought to life by Glenn Beck. The main concept Ballard pitched Beck was the creation of a paramilitary jump team that would swoop in and rescue child sex slaves. Ballard's OUR team would provide the action film for the abolitionists movie makers. Beck raised the initial $1 million seed money from his radio and TV followers. Ballard began forming OUR well before he left the Department of Homeland Security in December 2013. In this video clip, Beck describes the first time Ballard pitched OUR. And he explained 
what he was doing and, um, and explained that he needed to get out of working with the government and he had a way that we could really make an impact but they needed a million dollars to start it. And I happened to be with an attorney and he was sitting with me and I asked a whole bunch of questions and my attorney said, you, no, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't. What happens, something goes wrong, blah, blah, blah. If you're raising money and it's on the border and these guys are, you're, you're in Texas. What aren't you doing? Really spying on people. But, I mean, this is, this is child trafficking. Tim is the most sincere, most honest, honorable man I think I've ever met. And I said, I'm in. We'll, we'll raise your first million. I, I mean, my time, my network, everything is at your disposal. This photo shows Glenn Beck's beneficiaries in front of his studio, the movie producers, and OUR, two separate but cooperating ventures. The two entities were supposed to keep at arm's length to avoid breaking nonprofit law. One of the movie makers told me Ballard forced us to make him a full partner. We said right out, it's a conflict of interest. We sat down with Tim and said, dude, this isn't right. You're double dipping. He threatened to deny use of footage. He was paid about $180,000 for a few days work. Was it blackmail? We knew it was unfair. There never was a TV action series. The movie was completed despite the behind-the-scenes blow-up. The movie, after pre-release fundraiser screenings, was premiered May 12, 2016 in Salt Lake. Sean Reyes used his title and office as Attorney General to promote attendance at the initial Utah showings. This is Attorney General Sean Reyes coming to you from the great state of Utah here in the Capitol, and I've got a really pressing issue that I need to talk to you about. I want to thank everyone who has supported the abolitionist movie, everyone who has supported Operation Underground Railroad. Even if you've seen the previous version, you have got to, got to come out May 16th for opening night. The abolitionist will be showing in a number of local theaters here in Utah. We need to make sure we have a successful launch of the abolitionists here in Utah. And with that launching pad, OUR will be able to um, launch the abolitionists uh, filming and um, screenings throughout not just the United States, but throughout the world. Noted Utah politicians attended the premiere. The movie bombed at the box office before even making nationwide release. OUR now uses it for fundraising. Still, Glenn Beck's DNA remains deeply embedded in OUR. OUR has another movie waiting in the wings, The Sound of Freedom. It stars actors and is for theatrical release. It was shot two years ago. It was slated for a 2019 release. OUR now says fall of 2020 which means pretty soon. Eduardo Verastegui directed The Sound of Freedom. There's also been buzz about Verastegui running for president of Mexico. The Sound of Freedom makes the same unproven claims made by OUR's pseudo-documentaries, YouTube videos, and fundraisers, including exaggerating child kidnappings. The trailer says, Hundreds of thousands of young women have vanished from their everyday lives, forced by violence into a hellish existence of brutality and prostitution. All these fearless kids' faces. How long have you been doing this? Twelve years. How do you do it? It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Wherever I go, I find my way home. Verastegui, Reyes, Hutchinson, and Ballard were made federal diplomats of Mexico and awarded honorary doctorate degrees. 
Hutchinson is one of the film's executive producers, and the film features a character based on Sean Reyes. Verastigy also supported the Reyes political campaign, referring to him as My Dear Friend. Will the movie be shown in theaters before the election? Whether the film is actually released in time to help promote Sean Reyes' swashbuckling image and influence balloting remains to be seen.